This is my old artichoke row here, and I am replacing that row. Um, today I'm cleaning up these old stalks, but I'm leaving the old row in place while I establish the new row. So the point of real interest is this artichoke here, which is planted on a three by three by six foot, I think, pit. It might be two and a half feet deep, but I think it's three. So this is a big trench, and I backfilled that with uh, five to 10 percent charcoal. I'm just kind of guessing at that. I didn't measure it. Piled the dirt up here around it, and over the course of months, uh, maybe more, maybe even a year, I would throw in like weeds that were full of seeds, um, gut piles, old bones, rotten pieces of wood, all manner of different things, most of, most of which is stuff I didn't want to put in the, the compost pile. Like I don't want to throw a big pile of guts in the compost pile or a dead chicken because it just stinks and attracts flies and stuff like that. So this is a catch pit is what I'm calling it. Um, I've been struggling with the perfect name for this whole system. But I think a biochar catch pit might be it because catch pit, I mean, it, it, it rolls off the tongue easily. I mean, it's good phonetically and also it just really describes exactly kind of what it is. And the problem is it's hard to even talk about this whole project and this concept. In our society, like we don't understand the usefulness of the stuff that I'm putting in here. So therefore it, it tends to be named stuff like garbage. I mean, you could you could call it compostable or biodegradable, but nothing really like, um, none of the language we have really honors the fact that this stuff is really extremely valuable. I mean, it's not waste in any sense of the word. It's a resource and it's a valuable resource. So basically putting all that soil food into this concentrated area is going to permanently improve this soil but it's really the charcoal you know i put in lime waste and like little bits of shell fragments so that's going to contribute calcium for a very long time bones will contribute for a very long time and hopefully the charcoal will trap a lot of the nutrients that are in there and it'll also build humus and stuff like that but it's really the charcoal at um, i'm going to say at least 10 percent for my soil but i'm still trying to figure out the sweet spot is the essential element. So I've been growing this row of artichokes and artichokes like this with this basic system uh, for a long time and I have a feel for what what this system does. So I'm going to make a prediction about this. So with this old system I have the plants on six foot centers. They pretty much mulch themselves and choke out the weeds. I mean for the most part they'll get a few weeds growing but they pretty much take care of their own mulch zone like they grow so vigorously and so early that they just overshadow all the other weeds and kind of like uh, starve them for light and since they're six foot apart they overlap because they're at least six feet in diameter so that that creates like a self mulching uh, strip here the only thing i feed them uh, i stop occasionally and pee on them but other than that i just throw like my weedy seeds under there because i know the weed seeds are going to sprout, but they're really not going to get established and they're going to be choked out by the artichokes. These are doing that at six foot diameter. So I'm going to say that this is going to be, you know, eight foot plus diameter. I'm thinking more 10 feet, at least in the, the short term. And if you get a really vigorous artichoke like this of these large varieties, you could be looking at 12, 15 foot diameter. So I'm guessing, you know, eight plus feet diameter. I'm planting them eight feet apart in the row and that I won't have to water or feed this basically ever indefinitely. I'm seeing this besides uh, rodents, which could get in there and eat it. I'm thinking this is just a permanent system once I get these all planted. I mean, it's quite an investment, but think of that just like an artichoke row that I basically don't have to do anything except cut down the old stalks, which I haven't done on this row for two years. I mean, that's what I'm doing today. And these plants are going to produce like 40 plus artichokes a year. Or let's say 30 plus artichokes a year easily could get up to 40 and even more. So that's pretty exciting. And, um, you know, for me, this is kind of a proof of concept project. And what I'm doing today is I'm starting the next pit right here. And over the course of this winter and whenever I'll be throwing stuff in there and layering the stuff with charcoal. So I throw in some rotten stuff, throw in some charcoal, throw in some dirt, and um, that's it. But once I get this pit dug, we'll sit down and talk a little bit more about why I think this system is so cool 
and why I pretty much think uh, just about everyone should be doing it who has any kind of you know space of land, including a large, maybe even a large backyard. It's a little bright. Let's darken this scene up a little bit. There we go. Okay, I am standing in my trench, three by three by five feet, but I also undercut the banks a little bit. I don't know why, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. And how am I gonna explain to you or describe to you how cool this project is? I don't know. That's a good question. I think that might be a little bit difficult. It's a, such a simple concept. Uh, dig a hole, throw stuff in it that plants like to eat and that will improve the soil, especially uh, charcoal, and end up with a permanently improved soil. The part that makes it really interesting is the permanently improved part. And this is where the charcoal comes in because the charcoal basically doesn't rot. It's gonna be here for the duration. No matter uh, what else happens, that charcoal is going to be here for hundreds of years. Uh, it may wash further down into the soil. I mean, a little bit of it might break down into something else. I don't really know, but basically it's permanent. And some of the soils that charcoal has been used in to improve, like the African dark earths and the terra preta in the Amazon, those soils are 700 plus years old. Yeah, there you go. I try that on for size. So that's what makes it really intriguing. And you know, this, okay. So this system to me is about being integrated into the homestead and the life of the homestead and the resources of the homestead and kind of what goes on here. I see the end product, which is the improved soil as a kind of um, history of fertility of the homestead and what goes on here and what the resources are and my activities and my intelligence in engaging this environment. I always have these things that I end up needing a place for that I don't want to put in the compost. Like say I killed two deer this year so I have these like two gut piles. So what do I do with these gut piles? Usually I end up digging a hole maybe by a tree or something like that and putting them in there. But since we always have that stuff, we can be layered into the pit with dirt and charcoal and the pit slowly filled up as we have those things, whatever they happen to be. And you could also put, like my original idea was actually to do a latrine system. So you would have a trench like this and you'd put your latrine on it, but it would be a movable latrine, like it would roll or slide. And you could just keep digging, right? You just dig some more at your leisure because it takes a while to fill up and then you just keep moving along. And that's a perfect system for a latrine in some situations, not in all situations. The charcoal absorbs the nutrients and the smell. And each time you put charcoal on, you're putting dirt on, so you can measure the amount of uh, charcoal you want in your soil that way. So if you want 10%, I put in like one shovel full of charcoal and then nine shovelfuls of dirt. And there's my 10% right there. So to me, um, it's about integration and I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with going and getting a whole bunch of charcoal and may, say a bunch of manure, stuff you could maybe truck in, digging a big trench, even maybe you have a backhoe and you could use a backhoe to do really large scale soil improvement all at once. I mean, you know, it's just another tool, but I like this as a tool because almost anyone can do it and it's just there collecting the stuff. That's why I ended up calling it a catch pit because it really is descriptive about what it is. And it's just catching resources um, from the activities of the homestead as they, as they happen. So the real problem for most people, um, labor could be a problem, but just think about, you know, you can take your time. Like you could start a trench like this and then just slowly expand it. So almost anyone could go occasionally, you know, scoop out a few scoops of dirt with a shovel and over 365 days a year, it adds up. Or maybe you could just make your kids or grandkids dig the hole <laughs> for you when they're visiting. So that's a little bit of a problem. I know I realize for some people, the other people it's just a situation thing. You know, obviously if you live in an apartment or you have an extremely small yard or you share a yard or you have neighbors, 
you know, whatever. There's, there's obviously situations where you can't do it. But at this point, I'm pretty much like any farm, homestead, backyard, garden should have a catch pit like this. I'm, I'm getting distracted. So the real thing for most people is getting the charcoal or being able to burn the charcoal. Like a lot of people, even in the city, you can get material, like you can get pallets, but can you make biochar? you know, in your yard. If you have a fireplace, you could make it in there. You could call it a barbecue and kind of like get away with it probably. There may be ways you can do it and there's methods you can use that cause very, very little or no smoke. So you may be able to get it away with it more than you think, but it is a big problem for some people. So if you can't pull off the charcoal part, if you can't get it or whatever, then that's kind of a deal killer right there. I think eventually we're gonna be able to buy charcoal relatively cheap. Eventually, I think most municipalities are going to be collecting biomass and charring it it just because it makes so much sense in so many levels you could actually have power plants that produce power from doing that and um, everyone's going to want the product eventually so hopefully eventually you'll be able to like you know buy a yard of charcoal at a reasonable price and just uh, use that the gist of my message is this is awesome. I already think everyone should do it and I've just got started. You know, I'm barely seeing any results yet. I just don't, I just feel like I almost don't need to see them. We already know the terra preta soil and the African dark earth soils work. Um, this, you know, this kind of thing may not work for you in every type of soil and in every condition, but it's going to work for a lot of people. You know, I'm, I'm pretty convinced of that already and enough for, that I'm, you know, investing largely in it. But I also have seen the results that I've gotten. Everything is, it's all good so far. So we know that those soils work. And I was just thinking, okay, well, how did these people put this together, right? How, how did this happen? And I was thinking, well, rubbish, rubbish heaps are really common in any settlement of any kind, anywhere throughout history. You have to throw stuff away somewhere. So there'll be these big mounds of shells, rock, you know, bones and dirt and old, whatever old stuff people didn't want, they'd throw on heaps or in a pit. And even um, people used to take care of getting rid of their own things that like broken pottery and, and old broken pipes and, you know, old shoes and stuff like that that they didn't need. So this is similar to that system, except that it just filters out only the stuff that you think is really going to improve your soil and, and do some good. So I was thinking like how did they build the terra preta soils? These soils are up to two meters deep so that's twice as deep as this here. How do they do that? And I just think they did it intentionally you know I mean they were talking about large areas of soil I think they were doing it intentionally they were probably making the charcoal intentionally and digging it in somehow intentionally and when I thought of that like how would you do that this just seemed like the thing that makes the most sense. You know, you dig a big hole, you throw stuff in it till it's full, and you dig another hole. And again, just think in the long term. You know, think in the long term because even the investment that you make will probably pay off. Like, if I'm here for five more years, I'm guessing that this artichoke pit will pay off, certainly in 10 years. But past that, you know, think of, just think longer term, like don't think of your own needs, but just think of like what we're leaving. Like if we think in terms of leaving a legacy, that's just a good, that's a good set of values to have and a good direction to set our lives in. You know, I'm digging this, maybe no one will even be here or maybe they will. And maybe I'm planning this for somebody's grandchildren or their grandchildren's grandchildren or whatever. I'm just doing the thing because it makes sense because the world I want to live in is the world where people do that. Imagine if we were doing this since say like the 1950s. If someone had gone out and figured this out and done the research and been like, hey, we should turn you know, all the yard waste, just, just say just the yard waste and like tree trimmings and stuff from a city, turn that into charcoal and start burying it in the soil. Imagine the amount of improved soil that we would have permanently improved soil that's good for centuries amazing just think of that when you're thinking about this whole problem because that's the world we should be living in not treating anything that isn't waste as waste which which we have been since then and are still doing now and make something happen that is just good for everybody and everything all the time for indefinitely that's the world we should be living in. And there's not anybody else that it's up to to create that world except for us. And this is just the kind of thing we should be doing in, in my 
not so humble in considerable opinion. So um, yeah, go dig a hole, uh, watch out for kids and pets. And you know, obviously there's things you need to think about. It's not gonna work for everybody, but I think it'll work for a lot of people. And I think it'll work for a lot more people than think it will work for them, if that makes any sense. All right, so I'll probably see you again when it's time to actually put another artichoke on here. Uh, after that, I may move on to a different project or I may continue. I have space for two more artichokes that way, but it's gonna kick butt, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, we'll be back in a couple years and see like what this project is doing.